you guys, it's Karen and I am here to talk about these. These are some of the ordinary skincare items. Um, I started off, I thought I'll do an empties and fails and then I thought there's a couple of things I just wanted to update you on um, and I've ordered a couple of things. So I thought we'll do a general empties, fails and updates. So I'll start with empties. Um, this is the first one. This is the Gran Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion. So this is the Hydroxypinacolone Retinoid HPR, the Gran Active Retinoid. They, the Ordinary do this in 2% and 5% in squalane and they also do it in a 2% emulsion. I don't personally enjoy squalane as a product and so I always enjoyed their emulsion, the 2% emulsion. It's a kind of milky emulsion. There's a tiny bit left in this, probably another two uses in here. Maybe one use, you can see I have used it up. Um, I'm not particularly a believer in the technology as in this is advertised as a retinoid and I think that that's very misleading because it is a new novel retinoid that is not yet proven um, and I don't believe it's anywhere near as strong as retinoid you know tretinoin type of retinoid and I don't even believe it's as strong as retinol but there's lots and lots of research being done on it and we need to see the results of it and there is some promise around it and so it's one of those ingredients that I'm happy to have in my routine I really like this as a product this emulsion I love the way it makes my skin feel um, but I wouldn't depend on this as my retinol or retinoid I would always have something else in my regime i hope that makes sense because this is just to me is a very very weak um it's an ester it is a retinoid ester so it's not to me the real thing i i need to have a retinol at least but as you guys know i'm using tretinoin around my eyes and i'm using the qrx retinol on my face um, and i'm more than happy to use this in addition, I don't even really think of this as um, any kind of retinol or retinoid and I don't get any kind of peeling or anything from this and never have done. Um, but the emotion, emulsion only comes in a 2%. Um, and like I said, it makes my skin feel lovely, but I have to say it's, the smell bothered me the last few uses. So I don't know whether I've noticed the smell of things bothering me a lot lately and that could be medication. For me, medication can change your sense of smell. Um, but I'm not going to rush out and repurchase this because I've got a lot of different skincare that I'm trying just now. Uh, but it's something that I may purchase in the future just as a kind of luxury, nice to have item, but it's certainly not an essential for me. Oh, this is just, it, it's not so much a fail as, it, as in it doesn't work. I just, I, I'm not sure what possessed me to buy it. It is the ascorbic acid and alpha arbutin. I suppose I bought it with the thought that I would test it for you guys and do a review, but it, Alpha Arbutin is a skin lightening product and, you know, it's good for pigmentation and I don't, I can't say I don't have pigmentation issues because I have freckles and I have lots of freckles. So in that way I have pigmentation issues, but I don't want to lighten my freckles and I don't have pigmentation issues that I need to deal with. Um, and so, yeah, I haven't used this and I, it's just been sitting there and sitting there and has never ever found its way into my skincare and I don't know how I would test it and report back on the Alpha Arbutin side of things other than I suppose what I was probably going to do was tell you how it felt as a serum um, and then tell you what the evidence was behind Alpha Arbutin maybe. Um, I guess that was probably my intention. Oh, it's very warm. It's a very warming feels kind of like the EUK when I put it on my hand there, the EUK and the resveratrol ferulic acid type type product. So it feels quite nice actually. And it has got the vitamin C in it, so maybe I could use it in the morning and find out what, what the other benefits, if any, were of the Alpha Arbutin. I just haven't used it, so I thought maybe it's time to give it away. But I think what I'll do is I'll put that aside and have a quick look and see if there's any other benefits to Alpha Arbutin and what's the ascorbic acid level? 8% so not particularly high. I'll have a, a quick look and see if there is any way I can squeeze it in because actually at the moment the only vitamin C I've got is the ordinary ascorbic acid powder which I'm going to talk about just now um, and so I might just use this in the morning because of the vitamin C content. Um, so that's that. 
in UK, completely empty. I really enjoy this. This is another one whereby I don't necessarily um, think that, you know, I don't need it in my regime. That's what it looks like. It's a kind of oily feel. It's a little bit warming when it goes on for me. Um, feels beautiful. I absolutely love the feeling of the EUK and the resveratrol and ferulic acid and I like using them in the morning. Although the EUK you can't use when you're using a vitamin C um, or you can't use it at the same time. But I don't necessarily use it to rely on it as an antioxidant. I think it's another one of those that it's nice to have and it may one day prove to be something amazing to have in your in your skincare routine but at the moment to me there just isn't the evidence there but I don't feel like it can do any harm um, so it is something I will probably repurchase in the future um, and I really do enjoy it but I'm just I'm not rushing out to get it at the moment because like I said I've got quite a few things um, there is it I'll probably at some point do a big ordinary shop and I would add things in like the EUK, I'd probably add in some advanced retinoid emulsion and things like that. Resveratrol and ferulic acid. Um, this is the ethyl vitamin C that I have used up and I'm not going to repurchase this. This is what I feel is the most effective vitamin C and it was a pleasure to use and it's what I used every morning before using my SPF and I just feel that it's very expensive for it being the ordinary and you guys know I like to use quite a lot of product and so it didn't last very long and there's other types of vitamin C that I enjoy using such as the ordinary vitamin C 30% in silicone. Now I actually thought I had a tube of that and that was what I was going to use next but I don't, I'm sure I do but I don't know what I've done with it, what I could possibly have done with it but I can't find it. So that's the next thing I'm going to buy. I'm going to order a tube of that. Fully aware that this, if vitamin C is as good as its reputation, if you like, and again, I'm just waiting for research to back it up, this would be the one that would be the most effective because it will get through the skin the, the most effectively. But I prefer the feel of the vitamin C 30% in silicone. And I know that that will be much harder to to get through the skin, to get where it needs to get to. Um, but I just enjoy the vitamin C 30% in silicone. I enjoy the feel of it. Um, it. It's the perfect makeup base for me. And yeah, I just really enjoy using that one. So I, I am going to order that one and I'm not going to order this one. Would I order it again in the future? Yes, if there was, if research came out that vitamin C was definitely something that did wonders for your skin, this would probably be what I would use. And I might well use this and that vitamin C 30%. A lot of people will ask, well, what difference did these things make to your skin? And I haven't seen any, I use so many different products that there would, it would be difficult to know where there was a difference from any one product. Um, but also my belief would be that if I saw any difference in my skin, in its texture, in wrinkles, in, just the way that my skin felt and if, you know, the fact that I have less acne now, etc., I would put it down to the proven products I'm using, so tretinoin um, and SPF. Those are the two really ones that I believe in and I have used SPF most of my life and I've been using tretinoin now for a year, something like that. Um, and so those are the two that I would put it down to. I wouldn't expect to see massive differences other than perhaps hydration um, with products like these other than just generally taking care of my skin, if that makes sense. And I know there are people that think I'm absolutely loopy and like, well, why are you using all of these products if you don't believe in them? Um, but I, I don't not believe in them either. Um, I do believe there's a lot of promising products and a lot of promising evidence, and I'm not so arrogant as to say this is all rubbish, you know, um, and skincare is a hobby of mine, you know, I really enjoy using these lovely products and trying them all out and looking at the research and, and seeing how they actually feel and do they actually make a difference, you know, trying them out myself and doing my own research. So um, maybe that will answer the questions that I often get. One more empty and it is this, this is the natural moisturising factor. I bought, is this the bigger tube that I bought? I can't remember. I think this is the bigger tube, isn't it? Um, and I, yeah, I do really like the natural, natural moisturising factor. It's a great one to add things into. You know, you can add a drop of oil into it. You can add a drop of 
any of your acids in if you want to use it that way you can add um, you know alpha lipoic acid lactic acid etc I really like that so that's another one of those things that if I'd gone to order something specific from the ordinary I might add a tube of natural moisturizing factor in so I did really enjoy that um, I think that's everything for the empties and fails except for this this is now a fail although this is in there's a couple of things here that are in garden of wisdom bottles because i did decant once i finished all my garden of wisdom remember i did that empties i recanted if you like um into the bottles because i prefer the garden of wisdom bottles and the first thing i did was put the rose hip oil from the ordinary into the garden of wisdom um bottle and i did think to myself i need to use the rose hip oil because i know that it is unstable and i do enjoy the rose hip oil from the ordinary however i can just tell by the look of it that i i think it's gone off already don't know whether you'll mm, no it doesn't it doesn't look like it on every pump but there's a couple of pumps that it just looks a bit milky um and there's there's something about the smell of it the feel of it it feels a little bit separated there's something about it that is just not right and i suspect that it has gone off i can't exactly remember when i ordered it um but that would suggest to me that it was more than six months ago and i haven't used it there's quite a lot in there and that's the problem because i've ordered so many oils i haven't used them and really if you're going to use oils i feel like you need to use them pretty quickly um so that's a bit of a shame a bit of a waste because i do really enjoy the rosehip oil from the ordinary and again that's something else that i would definitely add into my basket and i do really enjoy the rosehip oil from the ordinary but like i said i think that that one has probably gone off so the updates um i'm still enjoying this this is the SPF 30 the mineral SPF 30 you can see that I am well down into that tube um, I can only use it when I use a hydrator before it so what I'm using is either the ordinary amino acids underneath this which is perfect it means that my skin doesn't feel tight when I use this if I use this with like if I just cleansed my face and then use this or a vitamin c and then this my skin would feel too tight so i need to use either the amino acids from the ordinary or the garden of wisdom daily hydrator when i use either of those things or any kind of hydrating serum then this is absolutely perfect and my skin doesn't feel tight at all all day um, and so i've really enjoyed this this is the spf 30 so this is a definite repurchase for me no problem with that at all um the sea buckthorn, I wanted to update you on this um, because I'm kind of annoyed at this. I love this oil. I absolutely adore the way it feels when you put it on. You, your skin instantly feels amazing. And I love the way my skin feels when I wake up the following day. It feels like a baby's bum. It really does. And there's, to me, I can only think of a handful, less than a handful of things that make my skin feel that way. Um, you know where, where you really know you wake up and go oh my goodness my skin feels so soft and this is one of them however I had said to you guys that I, I think I posted it on Instagram and people said oh what about the color because the color is insane that's just one tiny drop now if you put that one tiny drop even if you put it in with a natural moisturizing factor you'll still look like you've got an orange face and neck it doesn't you would think that that would dilute it and it obviously it dilutes it a little bit but look at the color you get from that one tiny drop and like i said even if you put it in with a moisturizer it, it doesn't dilute it very much you still have got an orange face and neck um it is very very highly pigmented with color and so a lot of people were saying that they were bothered by you know it getting on the sheets and whatnot and i said well for me it didn't bother me because I have you know my sort of patterned duvet cover and then the top pillow is the one with the whatever pattern of duvet I've got on but then I only ever sleep on one pillow I chuck the top pillow off and then I sleep on the bottom pillow which is a white pillowcase and and then I just wash that if I'm using that I'll just change that pillowcase the next day and wash it and so far that hadn't been a problem however I used that oil slept on a different pillowcase I think it was a fl my flannelette one and also I had a grey pyjama top on and it has stained my pyjama top and it has stained the flannelette pillowcase um, now I have 
used um, stain remover and sprayed it all over my night top, my pyjama top and the pillowcase and then put it in on a 90 degree wash on a t you know for three hours and whatever and it has kind of come out but I'll need to put it on again. I don't know if it will ever completely come out now and so that has kind of put me off because I'm like damn it I really really like that. Now to be fair I had this on all over my face but I always put a cream on top of it but what I mean is I wasn't just using one tiny drop diluted in a cream so it would have been a lot less pronounced had I have been putting it in a cream but like I said you still get a lot of pigment and a lot of colour from even if you put it in a cream so I just wanted to let people know that because I had specifically said oh don't worry about it it just washes out and it obviously washed out I don't know whether it was my silk pillowcase or a cotton pillowcase but now on this flannel it hasn't come out and on these sort of um are they fleecy or on my pajama top it isn't coming out so it's something to be aware of um, and it's such a shame because like I said it makes my skin feel amazing um but there you go I don't know so I don't know what I'm going to do now I, I guess only use it when I've got those other pillowcases on but I won't remember whether I've got those on. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit disappointed in that. Instead of those, the rosehip oil has gone off. The seed buckthorn is staining everything. So instead I'm going to use the bee oil. That's the one that is the um, mixture of oils by The Ordinary and that's one I really enjoy. So I'm looking forward to using this. Um, so that's gonna go into my skincare bag just now. And the final one to talk about is The Ordinary Powder. This is the 100% ascorbic acid powder. And that's one that has just, well, I've actually used quite a lot of that, you know, look how much it's, it's quite far down the bottom and it was, I don't know, two thirds full or something like that. And I wasn't sure if I was ever gonna use this again because if you've watched my video on it, I explained that it's very, very difficult to get the right mixture of this because the spoon is not small enough and you can't actually get a, a spoon smaller than that. And if you if you don't get the right amount, you can make it too potent and it can sting if you put it in the wrong product it won't get through your skin you know there's so many kind of pitfalls to making your own serum but I thought well I've got it let me chuck it in a few things so I put it into the rosehip oil um, and I was surprised that it did sting a little bit but I know that in the rosehip oil it's probably not going to penetrate but some might get through so I you know like I said I've got it so I thought let me try it um, I put a little bit in the daily hydrator the garden of wisdom daily hydrator and I think that's what I'm going to use this for going forward at the moment. I'm gonna put it in with the daily hydrator and then I can use my SPF and while I'm waiting for my vitamin C 30% in silicone and I will probably use this up that way. I don't think I would repurchase this. It's just too, it's too messy and it's too, you know, I don't want to be sitting trying to think, well, how much would I need to use? And you know, I, I don't want to do that. And I don't want to pre-make up a serum. And then it's that's just not for me, unfortunately. It was fun to try and it, it is good if you enjoy doing that, but it's, um, yeah, it's just not for me. But anyway, what I wanted to say was, if you use too much, it definitely still tingles like their vitamin C 23% does. And in fact, can burn because I tried it yesterday with the Garden of Wisdom daily hydrator and put too much in it and I was like oh lordy this is stinging my skin so I needed to like cleanse my skin again um, so this morning I just used like a tiny little half a, half a spoon um, with my two pumps of hydrator and that seemed to be okay and the other thing that happens if you use too much of it is you end up with a sort of pilling on your skin it's not the same as the balling up you get from you know using like a hyaluronic acid or a niacin but it's sort of you end up with sort of grains on your skin um which is really bizarre and not what you want when you're going to be putting makeup on you know um so this has been interesting and it's been quite good that i don't have a vitamin c because i will at least use this up um so i think that's everything to update you on and like I said I've ordered a couple of products no I've ordered one product I have ordered I wanted to grab the empty bottle to show you because I kept it um the low viscosity cleaning ester um this size of bottle I love the top on it I love everything about this product except the price I think it was 38 pound I actually ordered it from cult beauty because I went on there to order my Anastasia brow powder um and just thought right I'm gonna go for it because I've been thinking about it for a while because it's one of those products that this is going to sound really, really silly, but when I have it, I really get excited about taking my makeup off because it's just such a pleasure to use. You literally put it on a cotton pad and it just, 
your makeup just slides off it's so nice I really really enjoy it and I sit down and I get something up on the TV and People find it hard to, to get me to relax. I find it hard to relax. But Kev's always like, well, you just sit down for five minutes, you know. But that's a way that I do enjoy sitting down and relaxing for five minutes. And I think a lot of people take their makeup off, put their makeup on, do their cleansing routine in a bathroom or at a vanity table, etc. Um, and I know this because somebody asked a question about the Beauty Blender case and they said, well, what's what's the advantage of it other than for traveling? And I thought, well, that's obviously somebody that just does their makeup sitting at a vanity table, but I do everything, put my makeup on, take my makeup off, skincare routine, all of that, from a vanity bag and a makeup bag sitting on the sofa. Um, and that is the only time that I will sit down and I watch TV and I, I put my blanket over myself and then a towel. I've got a little little mini towel that's in my bag and I kind of get everything out, have my cup of tea and that's my kind of me time, you know. Anyway, I've gone off on a tangent there but I really, really enjoy this so I've ordered it. Um, and like I said, I'm going to order the vitamin C 30% in silicone. There are two other items from Desien that I really, really want to order, but it's just so expensive that I cannot bring myself to do it. I cannot really afford it, um, but Kev's getting a bonus later in the year. And so I'm thinking we might just have a blowout. I might say to him, let's just have a big old spend and I'll buy these two items. They are the Niod Neck Elasticity Catalyst and the reason it's so expensive, and it's the same for the other one that I want to buy, which is the hydration vaccine, is because they are in, the cheaper one or the smaller one is in a jar, and I cannot stand their jar packaging. It's like in a pill pot. And so I'd end up having to like slam it out. You can get a spoon, but to me that's just not practical. Or I'd use a cotton bud, and it just wasn't pleasant. So the only way to get around that is you can buy a super size of it in a tube. But the super size, of both of them I think is like £70 each so that's £150 on two items of skincare and it's just a ridiculous price but I really would love to have them because the hydration vaccine is something that that's one of those remember I was saying there's a handful of things that make your skin feel amazing and feel amazing the next day the hydration vaccine is one of those and actually the neck elasticity catalyst is not far off it either the neck elasticity neck elasticity catalyst is one of those products that although i reviewed it i did a whole video on it and i the before and after pictures i didn't necessarily see any difference i think some people did say they could see a softening of my lines i could see a little bit of difference in texture but i felt like there was a difference when i looked in the mirror it didn't necessarily show up in photographs but it felt like i was nourishing my neck and i felt like i could see a difference um and the hydration vaccine just felt beautiful it's got a very odd smell but it just felt beautiful on my skin um, and so those are two items that i might at some point buy and i'm always kind of on the lookout if anybody knows where they are on offer then please do let me know that's everything for my update so let me know what are your kind of holy grail ordinary products i'd love to know what products have stood the 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 test of time with you and what are the things that you would now not be without from the ordinary um, or from desiem in general so um I'll give you a quick rundown of my makeup. Lancome Tent Adele Ultra Foundation. Um, on my eyes is the Norvina palette, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina palette. Still absolutely loving that and working my way through the colours. I've been using the Emily Noel palette and the Revolution palette, which I think I'm going to review for you guys. Um, but I've switched back to the Anastasia Beverly Hills one now as well. Um, on my cheeks is Marc Jacobs blush in Outspoken. On my lips is, is this colour here? It is the... Bite Beauty Colour in Carver. I don't even know if you can still get this. This is so old, but I thought I needed to start using up some old lipsticks. Um, these earrings are from Next. This top is from Next. And that's everything. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll speak to you again soon.